In this lesson, we'll learn about the new scopes located in the panel menu. Okay, so Nuke 8 has added um, some tools for you to be able to analyze and change your color much, much more easily. And those are the scopes that it's added. Um, it's added three different scopes to the panel menu, um, and that is going to make grading your images and color correcting your images faster and easier than ever. Um, a scope analyzes color in your image, and it creates a map that you can use as an impartial tool to color correct your images. Um, so the scopes are going to be located up here next to your properties bin. And you see, if I come down here to scope, we've got three different choices. So when you try to do color correction or grading, your eyes bias may cause you to color correct it further one way or the other. Say you're color correcting something like a tomato. You know that that is a reddish orange color, so you may push it more in that direction without realizing that you're you are editing the color in a way that might be a little bit unnatural. With a scope, it takes away that guesswork and it gives you a very quantifiable and measurable image to measure against um, as you're doing your grading or color correcting. Now, these are the same scopes that are available in the Foundry's Hero program, which make the interoperability even stronger than before. Um, the first scope here is your histogram. So if I click that, you'll see how we've got a view of our R and G and B channels created here as this waveform. Um, so or excuse me, as this histogram view. So we really can't edit anything here just viewing the histogram. But we can use a grade node with this to really start to make this change. So I'm going to hover over the empty area of my node graph, hit the tab key, and we'll type grade and drop that in after our read node. Um, and because I want to be able to see my grade properties and my histogram at the same time, I'm going to right click the histogram tab and float that tab. Or you could float the properties tab because I had that one forward. That's the one it chose. So this actually might be a little bit easier just to have properties uh, down below and we'll have histogram up here. Okay, so if we come in here and I start to, let's say, let's take a look at the white point here. I'm going to bring that open. And I am looking at my blue channel because my blue channel is not overlapping with my red and green. So that's what's making this image have such a green tint to it. So if I come in here and I start to pull this blue channel down and pull it back, you can see how now that's overlapping with the red and green. It's still a little bit taller, but if I come over here and look, we've got a very big difference happening. So now um, we've kind of made this image feel a lot less green. It doesn't have so much of a green cast to it. Now before it might have been harder to edit that without looking at what channels were contributing to that greenish cast. Now we could also come in here and maybe pull up the green and the red a little bit to get those levels a little bit closer to the blue and green here. So that's even going to help that a little bit more. Now we could also scroll back up and edit the white point, or excuse me, the black point a little bit. So if we come in here, um, we can see that by moving this over, maybe pulling this down a little bit, we're getting those images even closer to a perfect overlap. So barely editing that black point and giving that white point a little bit of a difference um, is really going to make a change. So if I come in here and my viewers hooked up to the grade and then I also have the uh, read node here and I hit the two key, you can see 
how we have gone in and basically just by looking at the histogram color corrected this image to look a lot more like it's in a real world space color um, now what I think is interesting is that you can also use this to maybe make your image look a little bit different so let's try that same idea with um, without the histogram view and a different scope this time so what I want to do is I'm just going to come in here and create another grade node. So we'll just hit the tab key and type in grade. And we'll, we'll have different settings for this one. So I'm just going to hook that up. Now we're kind of back to our original image. And we'll get rid of our histogram and come in here and change our scope to waveform. So this is a similar looking setup, uh, but it has a little bit more information in it that um, I feel like shows off the image a little bit better than what you get with the histogram. I like this one um, just a little bit more. So I'm going to clear the properties bin there. Um, and if you X out of it, you can always come back in here and grab it from there again. We'll double click our grade two to open it up. And this time let's actually float our waveform. So with that selected, we'll float the tab and you can see how that kind of m squashes down and makes it a little bit easier to work with. Whereas the grade, uh, property wasn't doing that for us. Okay. So we can use this pretty similarly to the way that we used our histogram. I'm just going to come in here, open up the white point um, color wheel and come in here and you see how now I'm pulling that blue channel up towards my green and red and this image is already looking better and I just feel like it's a little bit easier to read because this one I've overlapped really nicely this one still a little bit low so you may find that it's easier to get a little bit more of um, an overlap with this type of a view so just kind of coming in here getting those as close as you can to overlapping. Now we also have a stack mode. So if I click that, you can see how um, this blue is a little bit higher and is maybe even getting clipped a bit. So I could pull this down and um, see this in a little bit of a different way along this line and measure them in, in that manner. So um, we also have that same stack option in the same place with the histogram view. Now the next view that I'm going to show you, we don't have the stack option because there is something um, that is inherent about the way that you read it that requires that they already be um, overlapping. So let's add another grade node, just hit tab um, and drop that in. And then let's take a look at this last one. I'm going to X out of my waveform and X out of grade two. We've got grade three here that we've added with no changes yet. And we'll come back down here to our scopes. And this time we're going to do a vector scope. And this one is really interesting and might be kind of hard to read at first. But the idea is that the purest image um, is going to be in the middle of this. So you're going to have um, these areas here that show you the different colors. So this image is leaning towards a green ca yellowish cast. So you can see how this is all of these plot points are farther towards this area. So the closer we get this over to the other side, the more it's going to be balanced. So um, it's more of an idea of balance than overlap in this case. So by right clicking uh, up here, I'm going to float my tab again. And we'll just pull this down here. So that's in view for us. And then let's come in and do the same thing to our white point. So we know that this helps the image by dragging the white point in this direction. But now you can really see how those points move the more that we drag it. And I really like this one a lot. I really like the vector scope. Um, so I can pull this down here and get those points kind of just right in the middle. 
And then, you know, if I was leaning one way or the other, just try to get that as centered as possible. And maybe even pull it down a little bit closer to the blue, maybe to get some of these pixels uh, further down here. Um, and then we could go in and edit the black point as well. That's going to make a difference. So you see how those pixels really start to look very red in the black areas and we can see that pushing towards the red in our scope. So I'm not even really having to look at my image. I'm just looking at the vector scope and knowing how that's going to change things. So already our image is pretty close to um, being very nicely color corrected just by changing uh, that blue channel in the white point. So hopefully you'll start using these scopes more in your color correction workflow. I know that using them while I'm grading is going to be much, much faster. Um, and uh, hopefully you have a better idea now on how to read those different types of scopes as well. So the idea is, you know, if you want to push it more in one direction to give it kind of a more stylized or cinematic feel, um, maybe you want it to be more blue or green. But if you have a shot that is leaning that way, getting it closer to the middle is going to get you more to a balanced uh, way of looking at it. Or if you're not using vector scope, if you're using histogram or waveform, having those channels overlap is going to give you the least amount of bias towards one color um, over the other. So thanks for watching what's new in Nuke 8.0 and good luck in using some of these new features on your own.